So, so far we've looked at the derivative only at a single point, and we've looked at it two different ways. One of them was from the graph, uh, which is just looking at the point and figuring out the slope of the tangent line at that point. And we also looked at it algebraically where we used the actual definition for that single point, uh, which was either the first version where x was approaching a, that point of interest, um, or the second definition where the distance between that point a and the nearby distance was getting smaller and smaller. So what we'll do now is we'll just extend the idea uh, to the derivative at all points of the function, so for various x's, and see how the tangent lines behave at all those x's throughout the graph for the function. So we basically look at any good old x, not necessarily just a, and we look at the difference quotient and the limit, and we define the derivative at all points x. And we have different notations for the derivative. We have f prime of x, or we could have any of the other ones. We could say the derivative of a function is f prime, the first one, or the Leibniz notation, which is dy dx. That's something that you need to be familiar with. Or y prime, which is the same as f prime. And sometimes you'll see things like d sub x f. That means the derivative of f with respect to x. So we'll start looking at the friendly functions, which are you know polynomial functions, and see how f prime behaves throughout the polynomial to get a sense of how the derivative actually does work out the way we think it would work out graphically and algebraically. The two ideas really connect um, before we go on and look at more complicated functions. So let's look at this linear function, um, a constant function f of x equals 3. If we were to look at the graph, we know that the slope or derivative, remember derivative is just the slope of the tangent line at all points, the slope for this graph is always zero. So it would make sense that f prime of x would be zero because all the way through this line you look at the derivatives throughout the slopes are zero. So we expect this horizontal line or this constant linear function to end up with a derivative function of zero. Let's go look at the definition and see how the two connect. So when I look at the derivative definition, and I try to do this algebraically, I am looking at this difference quotient limit, and notice this function is always equal to 3, no matter what input I give it. If I'm over here at 2, it's 3. If I'm over here at negative 4, it's 3. If I'm at 0, it's 3. Even if I'm at x plus h, wherever that is, depending on what x is, it's still going to give me an output of 3. So f of x plus h gives me an output of 3. f of x, regardless of what x I go on the graph, right or left, is still going to give me an output of 3. And we evaluate that and we get the limit as h goes to 0 to be 0. So f prime of x does actually, from the definition, even make sense to be 0. So my derivative function here, if I were to graph it on there, would just be this horizontal line going through 0. Now let's go and look at a, another line for which also we know there's constant slopes, but not a horizontal line. Let's look at, say we have the function 3x plus 1, and let's go look at the graph and see what it looks like. So again, we know this is just a linear function, and the slope of this function, of course, is 3. And no matter where I am, whether I'm at 1, let's say, or if I'm at negative 2, the slope of this line is always 3. No matter where I go, whatever x value I'm looking at, it never changes because it's a straight line, so we would expect f prime of x to be just 3 because the slope of the tangent line across this entire line is always going to be 3. Let's go see how it ties in with the definition of the derivative. So we have the difference quotient, and in this case, it's a function that's dependent on x. So I'm going to be inputting those into this function. So I'm looking at f of x plus h. All I did was plug in x plus h into my x. And now I'm looking at my f of x, which is the entire function. And let's go do the algebra. So we'll distribute. And then we'll combine like terms, and in this case, we have some cancellations, and we end up with exactly what we expected. Once we simplified everything, f prime of x 
for this function, the derivative of the original linear function is just 3. In other words, no matter where I go, let's go back to the graph, no matter where I go, whether I'm at 0, the derivative is going to be 3, or if I'm at 2, the derivative is going to be 3. If I'm at 4, the derivative is 3. If I'm at negative 4, the derivative is 3. So if I were to graph the original function against its derivative, the original function is aligned with a slope of 3, and its derivative obviously is just the constant function f prime of x equal to 3, because at every single point, I always have a y value of 3 for my derivative. Now let's go look at a quadratic function. Um, slowly like this, piece by piece, and then we'll extend the idea and maybe try to guess for some other shapes what the derivative would look like. So now we're looking just at, at the basic parabola, f of x equals x squared, and if we were to guess the slopes throughout the entire curve, as you can tell, things are changing because it's not a constant slope, up throughout, slope throughout the entire curve. For example, when I'm at zero, notice the tangent line is horizontal, so we would expect the slope to be zero at the origin. When I'm, let's say, at the x value one, the slope happens to be some positive value. And if I were to guess the slope and make like, let's say, a little triangle there, maybe it almost looks like a two there because my rise seems to be maybe twice my run, so that might be a guess for me. The slope at one might be two. By symmetry, if I look at the other side and I look at negative one, I can see that the slope of the tangent line at negative one is clearly a negative number. And again, by symmetry, maybe my guess is like a negative two if I were to estimate my rise over run. Now let's say I go to the y value, or the x value of 2, and if I go look at the tangent line there, definitely it's steeper than it was at 1. So if I guess the slope there, uh, I don't know, definitely it's positive, it's steeper. So maybe m is something like, it looks like, let's say 1 here, and the rise maybe about 4 would be our guess. So maybe the derivative there is 4. And by symmetry, I'll guess this side's derivative to be definitely negative because it's a negative um, slope and maybe a negative 4 if I guess this side to be 4. And also this guy should be, of course, negative 2 because it's a negative slope. So that'll be my guess um, if I'm trying to figure out at each x value what f prime really is. So basically my guess is that the f prime graph should contain 0, 0 at x, f prime is 0. At x equals 1, f prime is maybe 2. At x equals 2, f prime is maybe 4. So my guess is that the graph of the derivative, f prime, will probably contain points like this. But let's go look at the algebraic definition and see what we'll get. So I'm going to look at the limit of the difference quotient. And of course, I'm going to plug in x plus h into my function. and and the next step, all of this is f of x itself. So plug in the x squared, do the algebra. Squaring the binomial gives me that trinomial. And then we end up with simplifying, canceling the h's. We end up with limit as h goes to 0 of 2x plus h. And of course, h is going to 0. So this piece is gone. And we end up with our f prime of x that we were looking for to be just 2x. Now let's go graph f prime of x, which is 2x against this parabola that we had. I'll make, I'll get rid of my notes and let's see. We know that's just a line. So basically, of course, the y-intercept is 0 and we have a slope of 2. So up 2 over 1, up 2 over 1, down 2 left 1, down 2 left 1. I'm leaving my notes there for the ordered pairs for a reason. So we can compare the line that we just got, how that makes sense with the, how it should be the derivative of the red parabola function. Notice my f prime of x, just like I had guessed from the slopes, contains these points. 0, 0, because the slope is 0, flat at the origin. 1, 2 
is a point on my derivative because at 1, the slope really just had a value of 2. That's all this function says as well. And when I was at 2, for example, on the right, at that point, the slope had a value of 4, the tangent line slope, of course. So that ordered pair happens to be on my derivative. And if you look at the overall picture, on the right, where the slopes are positive, f prime is all positive dots, positive values. And on the left, where all the slopes are negative in this quadrant 2, all the slopes are negative, my derivative actually has all negative values. So all the y values of that function are negative. If you look at the two graphs against each other, things kind of make sense. Now let's go look at one more, maybe like a radical function, something that uh, we're not too used to. We'll show it algebraically quickly, but the main thing is to look at the graph and see how things make sense. Okay, so we'll look at um, 2 square root of x as a function. We'll try to get the derivative with the definition. Yeah, it'll be painful, but we'll go through the algebra for practice. Um, and then after that, we'll look at the derivative and the f function and their graphs and see if how things might be making sense for us, just like in the easy polynomial cases. So we'll go ahead and plug in x plus h into our function, get our difference quotient. There are some radicals, so we'll go ahead and use rationalizing um, to see what the derivative simplified gets us to. So once I multiply top and bottom by this expression, notice I'm using a difference of squares multiplied, so I'm squaring both pieces on the top, and hence the radicals disappear. So then we distributed, of course, the numerator, combined like terms, the x's are gone, and it looks like in this step we can cancel the h's. So now finally I analyze the limit, and since I'm looking at h going to 0, it looks like this piece goes away. And finally, after all the painful process, I end up with 1 over square root of x. So with the definition, we finally figured out that the derivative of 2 root x is really 1 over root x. So basically, this was my original function. And we figured out that the derivatives, the slopes of the tangent lines through the entire curve, gets described by this other curve. Each point that I go to in this function, its slope will be given by this function. Let's go look at the graphs of both and see how this makes sense. So here's my original function, 2 square root of x. Remember, it's just the radical square root of x function stretched by a factor of 2 because we've dropped that 2 in front of it. So if I had to guess sort of what's happening with slopes, let's go through it and get an idea. At 1, it looks like I do have a positive slope. I mean, that could even be a 1 over 1 if you think about it, because it seems like the rise and the run are the same. At 2, it's still positive, but less steep. Let's say I go to 4. At 4, it's even less steep, but again, still positive. And no matter where I go throughout my curve, it's always a positive slope. But definitely, as I'm going to the right, it's getting less steep. So I'm getting smaller positive values, whereas if I go to the left near or the origin, notice what's happening to those slopes. Yeah, they're definitely positive, but as I'm nearing origin, it's becoming so steep that it's almost looking vertical at zero. Now let's go look at both the function and the derivative that we found together on the same graph. So the purple function now that I've drawn is actually the derivative function, the derivative that we found algebraically, which was 1 over root x. And notice how that makes sense with the green slopes I'm talking about. First of all, they're all positive. All the slopes are positive, and my function has only positive values. It's only in quadrant 1 with positive values, right? Positive x's give me positive y. So if I'm at this x value 1, we guess the slope might even be like a 1. Notice that 1, I have a value of 1 there. Once I got to 2, the value, of course, became less steep. It was a positive value, but less steep because smaller gives me a smaller y value. And as I'm going to the right here, notice all the slopes became less steep, smaller positive values. So I'm getting smaller and smaller positive values, where on the left, it's going really steep and going off to infinity. So the slope became really steep 
and it's going 